and they did also finish the game with a five Baron stack and a second Baron. So we'll see what each team chooses to go within this last game. I don't know if Samsung will still rely on that Bard. Yeah, Samsung will be on blue side for the second game in a row. So same bands coming in so far as we saw in the last game. Now the question is, is that Sivir going to be banned one more time by the Tigers? Yeah, where do they feel comfortable enough uh, after having now won a game against the composition that Samsung has prepared to kind of leave I that open? I still don't think you you let the Sivir through right here. Sejuani will be the final ban, so mixing it up. Gragas will be available. Samsung looking to first pick the Gragas this time, presumably or draw out a Gragas ban. Now, lots of choices here. Do you get rid of that yeah. TF? Do you get rid of the Rek'Sai? But it's a hard situation, right. because if you ban Rek'Sai, then they first pick Gragas, and what does Hojin play? Lee oh, so they're, they're gonna, gonna go with the Gragas ban, okay. But Samsung last game took Rek'Sai and Lee Sin, and were happy with that situation. Yes. So Rek'Sai will be the first pick for the second game in a row, and they have to take Lee Sin here to see what else Eve's gonna play. Probably Evelyn. Yeah, he has uh, been resorting to that a little bit. And the Sivir being open does mean that the Tigers can now secure that for themselves. Of course, Prey has had some good games on that. And just in general, the mobility that Sivir brings to the entire team is so useful and can really help round out any sort of team composition. Uh. <laughs> well, they could do that. They could, okay. Well. First of all, that, that shut down very core parts of the whole Bard composition, the pick composition coming in from Samsung. Yeah, but we better hope that Crown doesn't play Fizz or yeah. some other assassins here that can punish early Twisted Fate picks. Well, Fizz TF is def uh, it's quite an interesting matchup, of course, early on. TF can try to keep on going and just go with Roams instead of having to deal with that 1v1 post 6. But. So Samsung, See. this is a little bit of a wrench in their plans. I assume they're still going to take the Lee Sin right here and maybe force Hojin onto the Evelyn instead, which has been, as more jungle picks become banned, a backup jungler. He could go for Nunu as well. Yeah, Nunu wouldn't be too bad. I mean, in general, with Sivir, uh, TF can, worst case, also benefit from that if you don't have another target available. Not going to be taken, so Samsung going for a little bit more standard team oriented pick here. Now, Alistair has fallen very far down the draft in this particular game. They may want to go for the Rumble just to have some more damage early on to counteract the Rek'Sai. And this would be a huge mid game setup for the Tigers for fighting around that dragon. Yeah. So many champions that. Had this big power spike in the mid game. Alistair, as well, when he first gets that ultimate, is one of the best tanks for some of these early fights. And looking like maybe they want to secure the Alistair. I mean, at this point for the Ku Tigers, they're not waiting on too many hard counters or something like that. So they're actually going to leave that top lane open. Yeah, uh, I think this is smart. It out. Go ahead and take the Evelyn right now for the mind games and the early pressure. Of course, the threat of a TF gank with an invisible Evelyn and a Sivir coming in too. So they have huge pressure on the bottom side of the map. Of course, the tower, the tower diving prowess of Alistair also. So Tiger's probably going to be looking for the, the 2v2 matchup here, standard lanes. So yeah. they can make those kind of plays. Samsung really, I mean, you see Crown on your screen right now. He's really debating, how do I most effectively shut down the Twisted Fate? Because the threat doesn't matter if he can't leave lane or if he's dead, obviously. So you can either go with someone who can push him out even harder or go with an assassin to shut him down. Could go for Lulu here. Yeah, Jinx yeah. Lulu. So actually, the swap. Samsung actually going with a very similar composition to the one that the Tigers ran in game one, except yeah. with a Gnar in the top side instead of the Rumble and a Rek'Sai instead of the Gragas. But for all intents and purposes, early game focus jungler. Yeah. Uh, although the Gragas, of course, does do better in the late game. But just about protecting that Jinx, they have an extra tank in this game in Gnar instead of the Rumble for yeah. additional damage. So I don't know. Taking Jinx into Twisted Fate, Evelyn, where they're going to get flanks on you and not having another damage source, 
I question this draft from Samsung. I mean, it's, you're relying a lot on your teammates Rumble, to save you. Rumbles. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, this is an old Smeb classic. Oh, man. I love it. It's about time that it's come back. Smeb's Riven. Against the Gnar. Very interesting. And Riven was nerfed in 5.9. Yeah. The projectile speed on the... Wind Slash is just a little bit slower, so it is, you know, a little harder to land that ability. Yeah, I mean, especially with the Whimsy and whatnot, Fury might be able to get out with a sliver of health if need be. But of course, I mean, if you get the Jinx out of the fight, whether dead or alive, uh, that's what really matters for the Tigers. And Riven, Evelyn, Twisted Fate, Alistar, they can all jump on to that Jinx and keep her on lockdown. Yeah, I'm excited to see this. Also, Riven's movement speed, base movement speed reduced as well. So a couple of nerfs, not huge ones, but still something to keep in mind. Now, Smeb, for those of you who don't know, has done really well in the past on Top Riven, and we're talking about last year. Yeah. Uh, when IM2 actually beat Samsung Blue, and Smeb was playing Riven <laughs> in that game. It so was really is, impressive. There is precedent yeah, for I... this. And there's insane kill pressure in both lanes for Hojin and Kuro. Yes. So they're really going for a more early game focus composition. I like it. We'll see if it works. All right, well, Ku throwing down the gauntlet this time in game number three. We'll see who takes the win. Man, this game for Samsung I mean, Fury can do all he wants for positioning, but it's in the end going to come down to his teammates, really. No matter how hard you try, when there's yeah. a rip and TF and Alistar. on top of you, that is really brutal. Really brutal. Yeah. I mean, Crown and Luna are going to have to be on complete bodyguard duty, really, and making sure their abilities don't miss a beat just to keep him alive. And at that point... The question is, even if he's alive, if he's still going to be chain knocked up by Riven and Alistar and then being stunned, uh, you're still doing no damage. I mean, the Tigers are happy with that. Yeah, also, the Riven pick, I'm not sure how this will work in the lane swap. Obviously, Riven does have some jungling capabilities, so probably can fend for herself decently well in a lane swap scenario. Samsung going to want the 2v2 here. Uh oh, oh, there's okay. a double knock up with the flash and the gold guard onto Fury. There's the lantern though, and the boomerang clunk coming in. All right, so Fury had to start with the traps just to make sure they weren't chased down, but they did take out both summoners from Gorilla. No summoners used by Samsung. None, but lantern first for Luna, which is yeah. horrendous in lane. That is a fast way to lose your lane, and you don't have any control. You can secure those souls from behind your towel. <laughs> Behind your towel, huh? Tower. Did you just take a shower? <laughs> Bathing thresh. You know, the soles and the... <laughs> doesn't have a hook. He just has soap on a rope. <laughs> well, hey, there's some good use for their lantern. Uh, the traps, too, yeah. So Fury is going to be stuck on that minigun mode. So he won't have that range to even farm if Prey and Gorilla decide to pressure. Okay. Well, Smeb is going to take the Wolf Camp first. Gromp first for this Evelyn. Kuve heads directly into lane. And TP from Smeb. We'll see him heading up to that top side. We'll have to see how this Riven Gnar matchup goes. Uh, Smeb has tried to play that Aurelia into the Gnar to <laughs> limited success in the finals just a few weeks ago. And now he's going to try sort of a different top lane carry to achieve that same effect. Yesterday, Someday played the Yasuo in it and actually worked pretty well, so. <laughs> Was a pretty good carry. I mean, an MSI Coral One also picked that Irelia and it blindly and then eventually into the Gnar and had amazing success in that game. So I think a lot of it actually really depends more on the Gnar and your rage control. Because if they dive in and you turn to Mega Gnar, then you know, the fight's completely in your favor because you've got the CC and the tankiness. So Hojin's going to check and see if there's anybody at the blue buff. And it's finally happened, Chobra. Somebody is playing Evelyn while Eve is on the opposite team. Oh, no. For maximum confusion. <laughs> and we nearly had in this game before Hojin had to change his yeah. game from Lee. So close to having 
the Lee said Eve on Eve. Lee <laughs> and Lee on Eve. <laughs> At which point yeah. we will just have to talk about Ku's jungler and Samsung's jungler yes. because there is no other way to refer to them at that stage. <laughs> well, nice spell show from Prey. Gonna avoid all of the CC there. Still, big CS deficit already for Prey in lane. Yes, there's a large wave pushing towards him, but they haven't been able to do much with the summoners down. The threat has been pretty big. Samsung, even though they did have to take traps and lantern first. Yeah, they just had to wait one more level to make sure they had their tools. And the flame threat from Luna. I mean, sure, Prey's avoiding it with the spell shield, but and Crown with a nice early blue, handing that one over as fast as possible. They just want to keep pushing this lane up and keep Kuro contained. Kuro actually going for ignite instead of ghost this game. That's a different adaptation. Ghost so useful on Twisted Fate. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, the burst will, of course, help keep Fury out of the fight, even if it doesn't secure the kill right All away. Right. First gank of the game coming in. Gorilla still doesn't have Flash to set this one up. I'm not sure how successful this is going to end yeah. up being. Ah, uh, Luna. Yeah, that's making sure he sees something's up so he gets the Lantern down. Even down the top lane, Kuve is stacking up his Rage, but the, uh, the minion wave is really pushed up against that tower. So, looks like they'll just back out. Man, just hitting level five. There's nice clear by the Mega Nar. Yeah, Hojin not setting up any early ganks. Instead, just focusing on the counter jungling here. Yeah, I mean, getting some advantages out of it. He's definitely a little bit ahead, and he's been able to keep track of Eve somewhat in the early stages. Now, Gorilla's Flash is going to be up soon, so Fury needs to watch out. They better have a really good timer on this, or, or else he's going to get caught completely unawares. Uh, early cooldown boots for Kuro as well, so just trying to dodge around that lane as much as possible. Make sure that his wild cards are up so that he can counteract some of this pushing coming in from the Glitter Lance. Well, it's not going to do him too much good for his uh, first destiny because he won't have that damage. Of course, he'll still have the stun, and like you mentioned earlier, Monty, the kill pressure is well, in he's the got, side lanes already. He's got tier two boots, uh, so this is also compensating for the fact that he doesn't have ghost. Oh, that's true. So that is quite important as he continues to chase down target and maybe getting a second pick a card in, a second gold card. Yeah, crew now going to go back. Maybe once more, but I mean, you see that with the blue buff crown just pushing up non-stop. Kuro and oh, Eve actually here from across the wall, and can they get the knock up? There's oh, they're gonna force the flash out of Kuro. He doesn't want to take any chances with that one. Nothing he could do after he had just pulled the blue card to get yeah. some mana back to clear. But they can dive this perhaps. Kuve's he's turning into Mega Nar real soon yeah, though. Yeah, that's quite risky. Not a good timing from the Tigers getting stunned under that turret, not something that they will be able to survive. So Hojin shows himself, and they don't get an advantage. Kube sticking around, and now they've changed their focus onto Crown, who's pushed up pretty far right here. They want to set it up with a Destiny on the mid lane. Here we go. The Destiny and Gold Card coming in. Now Crown does have Wild Missed Growth, wild card. also has the Flash. Yeah, the Wild Card not going in, the Ignite. Went on to Crown, but to no success. Crown still has his Ignite, so he has a summoner advantage when he returns to lane. Yeah, that, these uh, mid lane ganks aren't really working out for either TF player quite yet. There's just not enough damage on some of these junglers. No sign of a warrior enchantment this early in the game for Hojin. Yeah, and also just no damage on the Twisted Fate too. And for a short lane, the earlier move speed not gonna be as useful in chasing your opponent down. Of course, the Lula very safe pick as well. Hard to yeah. <laughs> take out, even if you have that Ignite, just because of the wild growth, giving you enough extra stats that you're able to skip out of danger. So it looks like Gorilla just trying to get some top wards down. This Riven hasn't done uh -huh. a whole lot yet. Gotten a decent CS lead, actually. Yeah, there is a Brutalizer here for Smeb, and Gorilla's just going to charge through and knocks Kuve out from that hop. Kuve's 
Oh. Trying to turn into Mega Nar soon, but there is the Ignite. Oh, Kuve will survive as he turns into Mega Nar and denies that extra burst from Wind Slash Thanks to the HP left mechanic. And he's gonna, actually going to get the stun onto Smep, but Gorilla's still tanking the tower for him. And Smep, oh, if he got hit by that house, that was pretty big danger zone, and that's going to give Samsung a window to get this dragon. Well played by Kuve, avoiding that And look that at this death. rocket coming up, but it does get intercepted by Hojin in the middle of the map. On, on, well played by Kuve, but also Gorilla airballed his pulver, pulverized there. So it had the pull hit, definitely Kuve would have died. So a bit of a misplay. And how much are they going to lose for this? Lost a dragon. Are they going to lose prey? Uh, TP. Teleport coming in for Smeb. So a flash from Eve. They don't want to deal with that. That Riven is pretty scary. But not at full health, though, but Eve also pretty low. So they don't want to worry about that. Destiny was not up for Kuro. He was trying to make his way down. And he's still waiting to see what's going on. His lane is pushed up anyway, and he, he will just return to mid at that point. And Smeb now uh, didn't get to use his teleport for lane, so it's going to take him some time. Hojin will have to go up and soak in that XP. Meanwhile, Rek'Sai going over to hand blue to crown in the mid lane. So TF Hole just coming back up right now. We'll see if they can make a play. Smeb, however, TP down. Means yeah. that they can't all just... Uh -oh. Come down into the bottom side. Hojin wants this. He wants the delay at the yeah. very least. Here we go. Kuve got a little too greedy with the back timing there. He'll get stunned by the gold card. Smeb should be able to come in for this. Or actually, Kuro is just going to help pick that off with Hojin. Yeah, Kuve got a little too greedy with going back earlier rather than walking all the way back. They didn't have any eyes on Hojin recently. Um, I think he also underestimated perhaps the time that Kuro uh, could have come to join in with that destiny. Yeah, unfortunately for the Tiger Smep, not getting even an assist right there. And the response from Samsung is just a bull rush this tower in the mid lane. Fantastic job. So a kill for a turret. Samsung yeah. finding a way to make that work for them. Prey and Gor Gorilla only get this one down by about one third HP. Well. Gorilla looking to see who's showing up. They're not going to check that Eve is, though. So Gorilla will just back out peacefully. Uh, Hojin also in the bottom side of the map being spotted by Samsung members. Still, getting that early tower down for Samsung limits the options even further for Twisted Fate for Ultimate. Puts him out of range. Yeah. If he's pushed back down to his tier two. Yeah, Crown just needs to make sure that Eve and himself put down enough wards so that he can continue pushing Mar into that tier two. Otherwise, uh, even Smeb could maybe go for an early Reggie. Gorilla could come in with Hojin, try to set up a kill onto that Lulu, or at least set her back and take that tier one away from Samsung also. Eve setting up for a gank in the bottom lane. Not going to happen, though. Uh, they still check for wards, and none there. But the bottom lane wants to go and get some new items anyway. So Eve will join them in a trip back home. Yeah, well, just still moving up the mid lane right here. Not going to get seen. Gets a ward down just so they have some more pressure. Ping's immediately going down. I think they saw the ward down on their ward, so yeah. they knew that Evelyn was there. Really good eye yeah. from Samsung. So they know that there's a ward there. They know that Anyone is somewhere nearby. Kuro showing up, trying to push back. Now we do have Luna and Eve showing up. They're going to catch Gorilla a little bit, but he'll just pulverize and walk away. Hojin hasn't really been able to find another angle yet. Of course, he did get that kill in the top lane after the second attempt. But the first attempt coming from Gorilla. Uh, but it took a lot of effort to take down Kuve once. And giving them a little bit of a lead for Fury. Oh, not going to get the slow. The zap on to Prey. Uh, Luna and Eve are still waiting. The Eve just checking everything out with his tremor sense. He knows where everyone is. Crow going to go home. Yeah, they really can't make too much of an aggressive play here because they have two pink wards. The Tigers have two pink wards on the side to make sure that Kuro can roam. Goes back and buys this Morello Domicon. So he could constantly threaten the bottom lane, which is preventing Fury and Luna from actually pushing down this tower. Yeah, I mean, they have Jinx. They would be able to take it pretty quickly, even if there's an Alistair on the other side. But the Evelyn and the TF threat that you mentioned earlier, Monty, from the Picks and Bands is really working in favor of the Ku Tigers. Now Crown finally just joining up after having shoved out the mid lane. It gets clear, but it doesn't matter. They just want to take this turret. 
at this point. This really Hojin dangerous. and Kura are coming in. Spell Shield used by Prey, but there's the Flash Pulverize, but the Wild Growth and Fury actually being knocked out and hit closer to the Lantern. Wild Card hits three members as Kuro comes in, flashes away. Smeb gets a nice kill after the teleport. Kuve comes in, but no Meganar in sight just yet. Crown gets gold carded. He's going to get stunned, knocked up by the Broken Winds. And there's the headbutt flash forward by Hojin. A nice rocket by Fury. Picks up one kill, though, and he gets excited, gets the zap. Boomerang not going to connect. Kuve trying to go in. There's a knockabout to Gorilla. Samson might be able to turn this back around. Can they charge through, though? The gold card comes in. Kuve's getting really low, but there's the Mega Nar. Oh, right in the nick of time. <laughs> so close. And a little bit of an over-pursuit right there. The Rocket not respecting it, getting that last bit of damage down uh -oh. so the Tigers couldn't clear up. Oh, and Smev's going to get knocked up. The house doesn't hit, but Eve will be able to pick up that kill, no problem. Greedy, when you know that there's actually that, that uh, Tremor since there to see yeah. you, and they could have an invade and go afterwards. Uh -oh. So Smeb dying there, and that actually has the trade going over. As Talk well. about greed, though. Eve's going to get caught right back. Uh, this game's <laughs> turning into that, a train wreck. We're around. in the zone. <laughs> well, you got four hits out of Pink Ward. Worth. <laughs> I'll take that out next time. <laughs> And Fury will be chased down. I don't think he's going to get out of this. I mean, there are the traps. It is going to catch both members. So uh, Gorilla not having his flash or his ultimate to get through that. Won't I've be able to set up a kill. Fury going to have to back off right as this dragon spawns as well. So Ku has their eyes on this one as they push out the mid lane. They're probably going to get it. Kuve no TP. He's topside. So yeah, not really anything that they're going to be able to do. First dragon of the game for the Tigers is the second overall. So evening out on Dragon Stacks, of course, a Samsung regaining the gold there to match up after taking a second turret. So Kuve going for the Nar build with the Frozen Mallet. Let's take a look at this fight again. So Fury just missed wow, positions. Luna gets headbutted in immediately, but the Lantern actually managing to save him. Kuro playing with the Brush Vision, and there oh. is Crown getting destroyed by Smeb. Yeah, it looks like and it was a, yeah, Destiny Gate coming in with a gold card, catching him right outside power range. Yeah, and that replay, the Lantern, the predictive Lantern by Luna, knowing the headbutt was going to come through, was really good. And uh, he started walking back immediately, too, yeah. to just maximize that range. But still, I, and that jinx, it just goes to show what this composition is going to be able to do. And even though Samsung's comp scales so very well, the fact that the Tigers have the perfect weapons to deal with the Jinx, even in the ultra late game, since they don't have any other damage threats, means that if that Jinx ever dies, ever mispositions slightly, if Kuro gets on top of Jinx, it's just going to be over the yeah. team fight. I mean, that's what we saw when Ku used this uh, similar composition in yeah, game Yeah, but at one. least they had Rumble. They had something else to deal damage. Fair enough. Cinder Hulk, Rek'Sai, Nar, Lulu, not, not going to really <laughs> help out here comparatively to the massive damage dealers that the Tigers are fielding. Yeah, all of them will do lots of damage, except maybe Gorilla's Alistair. But all, even the jungler will be able to do quite a bit, as Evelyn's often do, especially with the war enchantment. Of course, Riven known for the damage. And TF also will have some decent burst. Samsung now trying to pressure the last outer turret left. Uh, no flash on Gorilla this time around. In fact, no flashes on the entire team of Tigers for now. Uh, no summoners for Fury either, though, so he needs to watch out. But some other skills available for Samsung to keep Fury alive. Fury needs to start chunking away at the tower, but they're going to get a hook onto Gorilla. They, oh, they are not going to get the kill as Unbreakable Will comes out. Ah, oh, the rocket got to be blocked by three members of the Tigers. They knew exactly what was coming down. And Samsung, uh-oh, looks like they're getting a little too eager to chase down that easy kill. They'll have to go back and pick up the turret. And they will be able to do that eventually. Yeah, this wave minion wave it. coming up right there. Great siege from Samsung, zoning people out and getting the necessary poke down because Prey wasn't there to help out with the wave clear and to respond with some boomerang blades of his own. He was trying to push out the bottom side. And then as we take a look right here, Gorilla gets hit by just about everything, oh, including man. a crit rocket. And then... <laughs> look at them. Just all run towards the rocket. So good save uh, on Gorilla. Of course, if Jinx did get excited there, who knows? Maybe Luna would have pursued a little harder, too, to chain that into more kills. 
So worst case, Koo Tigers will so lose that tier one. Last out of turret goes down, but still gold lead for the Tigers. Yes. Says quite a bit. I mean, they're two towers down. Of course, two kills up, but even then, that's going to speak to some of the CS advantage, especially in that top lane. Of course, Twist and Fate having some extra gold, too. Eve showing up in lane, Luna. Looking for a possible jump onto the Tigers, but there's Destiny Gate coming in right in the back line, and Kuro's gonna get a gold card onto Crown, and Luna's gonna go down. Fury is doing free damage, but no one left to protect the poor Jinx. Out front, Kuve also joining up a little late for Samsung, a completely outnumbered fight, actually, and going in favor of the Tigers. Right, and absolutely no rage. This is the timing, too, when the Ku Tigers really want to fight, when they've got this unbreakable will before anyone really becomes too tanky on the opposite team, so they have a tank advantage, and they have a huge damage edge as well. And the with the Ribbon, blade. and the Warrior Enchant on the Evelyn, so that's a large gold lead. All of a sudden, the Tigers jumping up by an additional 2,000 gold as a result of that fight. Yeah, and Samson trying to just chase forward, maybe make something happen, but they won't have the mobility to catch up. Tigers wall back out, 1 minute and 20 until Dragon, and Samsung It'll has be, the advantage to take vision for now. Yeah, but it's another advantage for them. Their ults are going to be back up by that time. Fury's Flash is not, so they will be, they will have an even easier chance of jumping on him as long as they set up vision properly around this Dragon Pit, particularly with the Evelyn. If they can control pink wards, then they should be able to get a flank in some direction or other right here. You know, considering Eve died for the four hits onto that pink board, it's staying alive for a really long time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Luna just walked by it again. The value for that pink board was insane, <laughs> Chobra. It got them a kill, and it's still getting vision 10 minutes in. There's a nice ward by Gorilla over the wall to make sure that Samsung wasn't hiding out there. Eventually, the pink board will be taken on. I think maybe replaced, but... For now, Gorilla just going in and clearing out Samsung's pink wards. 20 seconds until Dragon is up. Uh, no teleports, but everyone joining back in. Hojin possibly looking like he was going to go topside, but he will return. Yeah, looks like they're going to be able to steal the blue buff at the very least, so that's not going to be picked up by Koro. All ultimates back up, except for the box. And with that, Tiger's just pushing forward. On the uh -oh, map. Oh, Fury. Yeah, Samsung's caught out real bad. They are going to just all have to group up together to back out. Kuro just puts down that threat. It does push Samsung back into their own territory. Which they really needed that ult, though. Yeah, it gave Koo Tigers a little bit of time to regroup, but they weren't actually able to make anything happen out of that. The other members of the Tigers were actually a little too far for Kuro to comfortably jump in for that gold card without his flash. He doesn't have that Zonia's either. Went for that Lich Bane. It did give them position on the pit, though, so... Exactly. We'll see if it's worth it, because now they don't have so many flanking opportunities. You can see Hojin already looping back around. Yeah, Hojin. But they don't want to fight this in a choke point against Samsung, and they don't want to fight it head-on. They have to have some sort of easy access to the Jinx. Well, Prey taking some poke damage. The dragon being juggled back and forth. And we go. Smeb and Hojin with the long flank all the way around. No wards. <laughs> it's actually going a lot longer than they thought, though, as Samsung decides just to push down that mid lane. Now, the Ku Tigers should still be able to get this flank they wanted, but they find Smeb, so there's the Lantern out, and Luna being smoked by Hojin. Fury is protected by Crown, Luna, and Kuve. There's a Meganar coming in. Smeb is actually caught out a little bit. There's a knock to Smeb, and there's the ultimate backwards from Kuve. He's taking a lot of damage, but he will survive for now. The Mega Inferno Rocket not getting the kill just yet, but there we go. Fury gets excited as he picks up the kill. Prey joins in, but a three-man, four-man knockup as Gorilla goes down. Fury still bouncing back and forth, takes a lot of damage from the wild cards, but gets another one, will escape with the Whimsy away from the Boomerang Blade. A three to no kill win for Samsung as they go for the Dragon. And Samsung reacted to that immediately upon seeing the flight coming in for the ward, just turning onto it, pulling Fury back so we could get some autos onto Smeb, and then they were able to lock him down. Perfect NAR timing on the transformation, so they just used everything 
to help take out Smep right there. Smep not able to do much at all in this team fight. Puro throwing some wild cards in from the back, but Frey has to walk all the way around. And then that huge knock up from Eve is who unfortunately for them decides to cluster up and that's when the Jinx resets start coming in. So now Samsung back even in terms of gold. Yeah, really well played. I mean, like you mentioned, Prey was also too far to add on any damage. And even if he wanted to, the, he was walking into a choke point, so it was pretty risky anyway. And again, the Frozen Mallet from Kuve. This is just a deal with the Riven. Same thing that you would do versus a Hakarim. Just go ahead, kite the Riven forever if you can, and continue to <laughs> auto attack so that the Riven can't split push for free for the rest of the game. Luna going in really deep for a ward. He will succeed in that mission as Samsung looks to find possibly another fight or at least one member caught away from his team. And Smav's gonna be spotted by the Termosens, I presume. Nope, actually, he's gonna come downwards. They're trying to threaten the Baron right now, but it's not going to work. There is a ward in the Baron pen. Meanwhile, Lich Bane, Kuro is going to split push this tower. Yeah, he'll succeed in getting that for sure as no one is in a good position to Go for that oh, defense. Hojin shows up behind, and Samson just gonna back out. More pings around the Baron Pit. This time around, no wards left in the Baron Pit. Uh, there's a Destiny, though. Of course, you can use that. And TF still has free pushing power. Right, and now they can get more wards in. So Samsung, this is a little bit of a fool's errand from them, trying to bait the Baron this early on, because they and now they're the Koo Tigers corralled. literally don't have to respond unless they actually do the Baron. Well, they are going to actually do it. Destiny is down now for Kuril, so they have that advantage. TF going to take a long time to regroup. It's going down decently quickly. There's the box by Luna. It actually denies Gorilla the entrance, and Hojin's going to get caught in the back. But Prey coming in with so much damage. There's the ultimate for Kuve, keeping him at bay. A nice wild growth, keeping Gorilla, Smep, and Prey knocked up. Fury gets one kill. He's guys excited. He got the whimsy. Oh, but the flash gold card from the side turns it around. Smep picks up a kill. A broken wind's knock up. And there's a gold card to pick up the kill onto Crown as Eve finally takes down Hojin. Yeah, that's the danger right there. It's way too early in the game to be forcing Barons like that. Just go ahead and respond to the TF uh, split push. Kuve has his teleport up. He can absolutely go home. You're going to lose that one turret. But at least you don't have to get ganked by the Destiny and the Gate anymore, right? You lose a turret, but you're still just playing for the late game here uh, against this Riven in this squishier composition. So they gave the Tigers what they needed. And they clean up as a result, stop the Baron, get one and a half towers pretty much. It's a good play on the Gorilla to prevent him from getting the combo onto multiple members. Hojin has a good ultimate to start off the fight and Bray gets a bunch of auto attacks now, but here's the big changer. Kuro finally makes it up, flash gold oh, card on the Fury and Fury is just exploded by Smeb. Fury got a little too eager to chase them down because I mean, if Kuro wasn't there, he would have been able to, especially with Meganar right by his side. But unfortunately not happening, and Luna actually getting caught out a little bit, but not going to result in a fight, uh, as Kuro didn't really have a good place to gate into when he's right in front of them. Yeah, they're still trying to bait this Baron. It's still too early. They just don't have enough damage with just a Jinx right now to do it fast enough. Yeah, they'll have to wait a little bit. Randuin's now in the works for Kuve. And the Koo Tigers just doing the same thing again. I mean, Samsung seems too eager to make something happen around the Baron Pit. So the Koo Tigers are just giving it to them and in fact corralling Samsung into that side of the map, giving Twisted Fate free reign of the bottom side whenever he wants. Yeah, Smeb going for a pure damage oh. build too. The Baron has been started though. And Kuve just being shown, and Gorilla walking towards them. Luna backing out a little bit. They need to make sure they don't get caught once again. Nice three-man ultimate coming in from Hoja, but there's a knock up onto Gorilla. Gorilla caught way out in front. The damage now finally coming in for the Koo Tigers, but Samsung has also taken quite a bit of a hit. So they're going to have to back out once again. There's there's just nothing you can do right now about this Baron bait. Samsung overcommitting uh, to this. Hello, Luna. Hi. Uh, I think Luna wanted to go for the counter flank onto Smeb, which may have worked if all of Samsung followed through, but they were busy dodging that wind slash. So Smeb and Kuro just picking up a free kill onto the poor Thresh. Uh oh, is it time to try the Baron again, Chobra? I don't think it is. 
Well, uh oh. Well, this time I'm trying to bait it. There's a there's a ward in the back of the pit that Smep just yeah. placed though. What are no? <laughs> no, no, Samsung. You can't do that right now. How many Baron of Tux does it take for <laughs> Samsung to realize they're going to there's, lose? There's TP and Destiny up right now. There's no way you do that with your guys that haven't even recalled at this point to get some more HP. They're really overestimating the power they have in Jinx right now when she yes. only has two core items. Yes, they are. Very much. I, I agree with you entirely. And it's costing them. Now they're 5k gold behind as a result of those that extended series of Baron Baits. Yeah, when they can just hold steady, just go defend your turrets. They also <laughs> lost an insane amount of CS by doing yeah, that. Yeah, a lot. I mean, look at TF245, 70 ahead of Crown, who's a Lulu. I mean, Lulu farms just fine. Wildcard's coming in from the side, though. And so Samsung knows they want to back out a little bit. Destiny up, but Fury is way in the back lines. Uh, Koo Tiger's not in place to follow up. There's a three-man ultimate start. There's a Prey just charging forward with On the Hunt. Crown has to use the Wild Growth to catch Kuro. Prey's gonna get a kill. Kuro still alive with the Zonias. Hojin's gonna pick up a kill onto Crown. Fury trying to do as much damage as he can from over the wall, but the Unbreakable Will will keep Gorilla alive. Kuve trying to just get the stuns and protect Fury. Fury's out of mana, so he can't shoot his rockets anymore. Tries to get one more crit down, but it's not enough damage. And three members down for Samsung as the Koo Tigers walk towards the Dragon. Yeah, they're gonna be able to take this Dragon. Uh, get their second of the game. Uh -oh. Fury taking a gamble with the rocket. Uh, oh. <laughs> well, that was could have turned things very interesting, but not going to happen. Now, you know, it's just interesting to me that Samsung correctly played against this exact composition to success, and they're just falling into the same <laughs> trap. Like... <laughs> Well, you know, sometimes it's a matter of practice, Chobro. That is true. Sometimes it's, it is it, true. It's a matter of practice. And yeah, they have been, been caught out a little bit. And they're not being patient. They should know that they they will have some sort of edge in the late game, especially when Fury gets a QSS. I mean, it's still going to be difficult for Fury to stay alive. Ku did pick a kill the Jinx composition, so. But yeah, they, they, they need to have a little bit more faith, I feel. I'm pretty sure, though, the time, time's really running out. If Smeb gets a Guardian's Angel... That's very true. Yeah, the, the moment that Guardian's Angel comes out, <laughs> Fury is just not staying alive. There's nothing you can do about it. He'll just keep chasing after you. He's got that Black Cleaver, too, for some health and armor shred. On top of the cooldown, so he'll really be able to chase and provide continuous crowd control with those knockups on Broken Winds. Wings right there. Yeah, and this is where Ku's composition can really take the lead with the massive gold advantage that they have. Their setup for picks around this Baron pit is going to be devastating. As Samsung will have to repeatedly face check just to make sure that there's no Baron going down because of the speed at which it could be done. Yeah, I mean, Fury's doing a lot of damage. And Samsung, like you said, if they were just a little more patient and allowed Fury to have the fight that he wanted, It'd be just fine. Now, Samsung doesn't know how to do this. If there's a Rek'Sai right on the enemy team, you have to run around in circles in the Baron pit. Yeah. Uh-oh. Well, Hojin gets the perfect flank. Fury will be able to lantern out, but Crown and Kuve are just going to get knocked back and forth. Gorilla with a double knockup with that Pulverize. A nice play to keep Fury alive, but here comes Smev. Gets one kill. The cooldowns are coming, but he's going to back out as he takes a crit to the face. Fury just taking the coward's way out right there. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> he's like, I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> New team can't protect me. <laughs> no, they can't. They can't protect him. They just can't protect themselves, unfortunately. <laughs> There's only one lantern. There's only one ticket out of that situation, and Fury's going to take it every time. So that'll be a Baron for the Tigers. Wow, poor Crown, 0-6-6, zero, six and six, just hasn't had the most spectacular game after some successful games on Twisted Fate. Previously, and Fury looking for a little bit sustained now, building towards the Vamp Scepter after the last whisper.
Prey on the other side, 5-0 and 8 as the enemy AD carry. Now both AD carry is doing pretty well this game, but the, the picks are being made by the Tigers. Samsung invested so many resources into trying to bait that Baron, and it was a fruitless endeavor that allowed the Tigers to take a lot of objectives and a lot of farm on the map, and then kill them. Yep. Prey also going for the Alacrity enchantment on his boots, just going for the flat move speed bonus rather than the fur enchantment, allowing him to rejoin the fight as soon as he can, and also just dance around the outside even if he doesn't have the target to kite with. Yeah, also just good for the sieging in this situation as well. Kuro has basically everything a Twisted Fate could want right now. So the split push is going to come in, 1-3-1. One, one. Could be done by the Tigers, but it looks like they want to group to siege with Sivir and Twisted Fate together, considering there is no Tier 2 in the bottom side. Yeah, I mean, they have the Baron buff. This is going to be easy takedowns. And Destiny Gage is being used liberally at this point with that Baron buff. They just want to push as much as possible, put down all the pressure. They'll be able to take that next Dragon, too. And Prey and Kuro. In the bottom lane, Hojin's going to hang out here a little bit behind. He's going to get spotted by the tower, so he's putting down the threat. There's a teleport from Smep, too. They really want to secure this inhibitor. Teleport going to be denied from Kube, and a nice flash pulverized. Lantern cannot be taken as the entire team of the Tigers stand on top of it. Fury down. Can Ku Tigers end the game right here? Smep jumps in, gets the stun, gets a kill onto Crown. He's still going with the shield as he broken wings out of the Nexus turrets and Gorilla just tanking it for one last second as the Ku Tigers push for the win in game three, a 35 minute game. Smep with another successful ribbon under his belt and the Tigers win two to one. Wow, well, the Tigers pulled it out in the end. It was a little bit dicey there for a while. Samsung actually putting up more of a fight today than I thought they would coming yeah. in at uh, having that really cool composition in game one. and taking it to the limit in game two, really pushing the Tigers hard. Tigers deciding to pick an early game, mid game focus composition in the third game, and they got the kills where it needed, and Samsung just not patient enough with their composition. Yeah, definitely showing that they still have some more experience to gain, some more lessons to be learned over time, but you know, I agree with you, Monty. They showed us a really new side in game one. It was very well prepared, very crisp, and I think, you know, if you're a fan of the Samsung team, there's definitely better days to look forward to from here on out. I think Samsung is definitely evolving. We've seen some very distinct game plans from them already this season, a couple different ones. And now they've actually started to have that execution in terms of their teamwork as well. And innovation, bringing that TF Bard composition with Sivir in game one, it was a really good comp. And they played it quite well. Yeah, they played it very well. They took that game one. Um, put some danger in 